16th branch of Mega Mart and Macro Mart supermarkets in Bahrain has opened in Sahala. The best offers are available to the customers at affordable rates. Everyone is welcome. During and around the opening day, a variety of fish including salmon, meat and dairy products, roastery, frozen items, food and non-food items, groceries, fruits and vegetables, electronics, garments and ready-to-eat food items are available to the customers at affordable rates. Hearty welcome to all. Mega Mart and Macro Mart, your favorite shopping destination. NEC Rabbit. Send money online to India. Credit in seconds with great rates. Download NEC Rabbit app now. The exclusive franchisee of Cochin Kala Bhavan in Bahrain. With over a decade of existence in Bahrain, exclusive online regular classes have started for classical dances, music vocals, instrumental music, cinematic dance, Kathak, Zumba body fitness, karate and yoga, drawing, arts and craft, children's theater. For more information, please call 3909-6845-3909-4806-3885-2397 or visit www.bahrainmediacity.com. Since 2006, Magnum Imprint have been offering high standards of quality with our professional team that delivers all your advertising and promotional requirements efficiently and promptly. For more details, please contact 39887088 or 33856330 or 33542530. Two women who made it a second time to the board of Bahrain's prestigious traders' representative body, the Bahrain Chamber. The women who have proven their merits and mettle in the kingdom's business scenario. The duo with a vision to contribute to the country's economic vision 2030. Joining me this evening on BizTalk to share with us their insights on the way forward in business in the kingdom. Batul Mohammed Dadabai and Sonia Janahi. Good evening and welcome to the show. Good evening. Thank you for having us. It's indeed a pleasure to have you with us this evening. Congratulations on making it for a second term at Thank the 30th you so much. board. Thank you. Thank right. you very much. Ms. Batul, yes. let me start with you. To introduce you to the audience, Ms. Dadabai, the name says it all, board member of the Dadabai group and who has her own business, Affinity, a fashion statement. Well, the past four years, you've been out there, closer to the community I would describe you as. Absolutely. And you've made it a second term. Let's begin on that note. How do you reflect on your winning? <clears throat> First of all, thank you so much for having us on your show. Um, I know that um, last year, a couple of times we tried uh, this, but um, thank God, by the grace of God, now and I believe it has right happened time. at the right time. Exactly, yes. you know. So, absolutely, it feels great uh, to be back uh, in in you know the BCCI board, 
And the way I see it is that um, this time it's not as simple as, uh, you know, just being on the board. It's like first time in the history that the entire block has come together. So that itself is, uh, you know, a great achievement. Um, I owe it to our supporters, our voters. They have worked very, very hard, regardless of the nationalities. They were with us from the morning till uh, even the results that came mm -hmm. out when we were also not there. So on your show, I take this opportunity to thank each and every one of them. If it was not for their hard work, we would not be here today. So, and now the second thing is being there on the board for the second time, I see this as uh, an opportunity uh, to finish what we started. Yeah. Due to the pandemic, a lot of things which were, you know, the plan which was there on the cards, uh, we couldn't finish it. So now this is like a second chance given yeah. to us. Mm -hmm. We're very, very grateful for that. It is uh, our duty and responsibility to this time, not only finish it, but to fine tune it. Mm -hmm. After the pandemic, the world has changed drastically. The way we used to do business before, it's not the same. So whatever we had in mind, in plan, also needs to be slightly changed. Uh, besides that, on top of that, we also have our program for the next term. So that is also going to be uh, part of our, you know, our work. We have to work fast, we have to move fast. Our neighboring countries, uh, are moving in the you know speed of light, so we we know that uh, it, it's it's like it has to be done, it has to be right, and it has to be fast. Great, thank you, thank you, Ms. Batul. Thank moving you. to Sonia Janahi. Well, again, I would uh, want to describe you as a sweet woman because you're <laughs> behind a brand in Bahrain to satiating every sweet tooth lovers, Maya La Chocolatry founder. Uh, and um, Sonia, you've always been there on the board, like even before, even without being on the board, you had been active on the, uh, the committees of the BCCI, the former BCCI. And you're the first Arab woman to be on the ILO, the International Labour Organization. I think that's more than enough for a description to begin with. You also, along with Batul, made it a second term. Yes. Let me hear from you. So what do you think about it? Thank you so much. Um, thank you for hosting us uh, today. It's Pleasure an honor and a privilege to be here. And uh, as rightly my, my colleague and my sister Batul said, we want to thank everybody who supported us, who believed in us, who voted for us. At the end of the day, uh, we cannot be where we are today if we don't have the confidence of, of the business community in Bahrain. And when we say business community, it's not related to nationality because it relates to every CR holder, right. every member of the Bahrain Chamber. And, and this includes all communities in Bahrain that, that really believed in us and in what we did the last four years and, and saw a vision of us being there for another four years. Um, the last four years was quite a challenge, uh -huh. uh, and the challenge was on various aspects. Number one, we had uh, an extensive strategy, and we focused on restructuring all the committees from 28 committees to 10 committees, which are sectoral focused, and focuses on non-oil sectors that add value to the GDP. Parallel to that, halfway through, we were hit by the pandemic, uh -huh. which basically disrupted everything that we were doing. And we had to go back to square one and strategizing how we sustain businesses because priority during the pandemic was sustainability. Yes. And this is why today, even as a block going into the chamber again, our, our uh, logo or slogan is sustainability yeah, and growth. growth. Yeah. And, uh, and we're, still, we're still not there when it comes to getting out of the problems and challenges that the pandemic has caused to the business community. There's a lot that needs to be done to ensure that businesses do sustain and do grow. And when we say growth, growth is not just within the Bahrain community, but also globally. Mm -hmm. Bahrain has a beautiful platform. It has beautiful services that supports every creative initiative to come out and to be tested. But also, we want these tested uh, prototypes to go beyond Bahrain because in Bahrain, we are restricted by the number of population, by the purchasing power restrictions, but also they have unique ideas. Mm -hmm. 
that, that if we give them the right tools, the right opportunities, they can go beyond Bahrain and be success so stories. And this is what our focus is going to be. Today we have 22 strategies okay. that we are focusing on for the next four years. These 22 strategies will be further broken down into tactical actions to ensure that we focus on SMEs, which is a priority. They represent 98% of our members in the chamber. We focus on their sustainability. We focus on their growth. We focus on competitive collaboration and how organizations in the same sector can work together and complement each other. We can focus on how we can then take them beyond the Bahrain, be it their services or their products. Because we want global icons to come out from Bahrain. And I've tested this as my brand mm -hmm. when we started in 2006 as the first franchise model, and it did work. So why wouldn't it work for everyone else? Especially that there are amazing ideas. Bahraini people are known for their creativity. Uh, businesses in Bahrain are known how creative they are and how efficient they are and how dedicated they are. They only need the right support to take them beyond Bahrain. And this is going to be our primary focus. Parallel to that, we want to focus on protection of the SMEs. One of the major challenges that SMEs are facing today is funding. But also, we don't want to drown SMEs in banking loans because at the end of the day, this will drain them more. We want to come up with creative funding concepts of, of uh, creating companies, investment vehicles that will invest in, in SMEs that have potential. Angel investors, venture capital structures, crowdfunding. These are the creative uh, financial models that SMEs require and deserve to have. Similar to what's happening globally. We're yeah. not going to be the first people to launch it or identify it, but we have to have it. Well, it's a beautiful vision as you narrate it like a story. It's very interesting to listen to that. And the uh, interesting point that I picked from your response to me is the way you projected as your venture as a success and how you want the others to follow that. And definitely, Bahrain has immense potential, no doubt about it. Yeah. Batul, coming back to you. Sonia just mentioned a few things about the way forward, as yes, we heard. Yes. And I remember Tajar came four years ago with a proper plan in place. And I remember the 100-day yes. promises yeah. that you had, which you met. Me, as a journalist, I kept a track of it and I got back to Mr. Nas on day 99 and asked him, and I was really impressed to hear that yeah. you are there. So again, when you this time, when you launched the JAR 22 with the solid plan, uh, as Sonia said, and as you would agree, yeah. the last four years, pandemic not only took the business sector, the entire world oh. in a whirlwind, isn't it? For sure. Uncertainties. M humankind was taught that things await there which we cannot predict. With all these plans in place, what kind of challenges do you foresee? Because even in our pre-interview talk, we heard certain concerns of business community, isn't it? The world is always talking of consumers. From a business point of view, what are the challenges that you would see as um, a team or as a blog or as business community? Exactly as uh, Sonia mentioned, that the way uh, forward plan that we have in mind, actually each and every point in that is itself a challenge. And I believe that everything is a priority. To be very honest, at this stage that we have come, it has to, everything needs to be done parallelly together. Yeah. So since we are 18 board members, there is going to be, uh, you know, like one thing that each one of us is going to look uh, into, you know. Uh, I personally, I'm going to, uh, or what I would like to do is look into tourism. I believe that uh, we need to have a national tourism strategy that covers all the sectors, uh, all the different type of businesses, as well as a very strong collaboration between the government and the private sector, so that the plans of all the sectors are uh, included in, in that, and everything needs to move together towards achieving the same goal. If everybody is going to, uh, you know, like move uh, in different directions, uh, we're going to put in a lot of effort, but in the end, the result is not going to mm. come there, you know. 
So uh, this needs to there needs to be a lot of teamwork. There, the, everything needs to be based on uh, studies, statistics, researches. Mm. So our job as uh, the chamber is to look into this because I think that there is a lot of potential in this. Uh, the infrastructure, even if it's there, it needs to be uh, properly, uh, let's say, strengthened, you know, in many ways. So I think that uh, I wouldn't say this it's just as a challenge. I would say it's an opportunity. We need to go and we need to tap on this opportunity as soon as possible. That's a great way to look at the glass as mm. half full, right? Yeah. All the very best to the brilliant team. Did you really think that all 18 would come back? together as a block because last time we saw three <laughs> isn't it it was a dream it was a dream it was a wish for us yeah and and we worked hard um, uh, we weren't sure because okay. at the end of the day it depends on the market perception but we thank them for their confidence mm -hmm. um, this also proved um, the wise leadership of mr. Samir Nas as, as our chairman mm -hmm. that he chose the right people and he brought the right people together in one group and this uh, was validated by the votes of the community. Uh -huh. So um, yes, we did have that wish and that dream, but thank you to the business community who validated that dream. And uh, the beautiful thing about the 18 is that we complement each other. Uh -huh. We are different people from different market segments, have different experiences, different track records, but we complement each other and we work together beautifully. Uh -huh. And the last six months, we've been working together nonstop on a daily basis, which proved even our uh, cohesion together uh -huh. uh, and the strength that we have together because we lift each other and, right. and give each other support. And, and that's, that's the beauty of it. So thanks to Mr. Samir Nas for selecting us and, and giving us an opportunity to be back on the board of the chamber to hopefully give back more to the community. Great. All the very best to the entire team. Let's get a little more into it. And before that, let's take a short break. So with me this evening are two beautiful women, Batul Dadabai and Sonia Janahi. of Mega Mart and Macro Mart supermarkets in Bahrain has opened in Sahala. The best offers are available to the customers at affordable rates. Everyone is welcome. During and around the opening day, a variety of fish including salmon, meat and dairy products, roastery, frozen items, food and non-food items, groceries, fruits and vegetables, electronics, garments and ready-to-eat food items are available to the customers at affordable rates. Hearty welcome to all. Mega Mart and Macro Mart, your favorite shopping destination. Welcome back to Biz Talk from BMC Global Live. And with me this evening is Sonia Janahi and Batul Dadabai. Coming to the topic that we should discuss on this platform, we women, right? And Bahrain has always been on the forefront when it comes to women, women empowerment, right from the days of education to we even have a speaker to the parliament as a woman, ministers, isn't it? Three women made it to the 30th board. And last year it was? Three, also three, three. as well. Yeah. I was talking to Ms. Zayani when she came to vote at the chamber. And I asked her, what do you think about women representation in the chamber? She said, yeah, we were five before. You remember that, right? Yes. Went to three, but then the three are enough. This is what she said. Mm. 
She didn't mean like, you know, enough as in enough. She said, even three can do wonders. Let's hear from you, the two women who made it. Plus, a long congratulations to Sausen who could not make it with us this evening. Sonia, let me start with you. Do you think we need more women coming forward to, to represent the five we had before? What is your take on that? Well, um, as per what Mr. Samir Nas said, every woman uh, with us is equivalent to 10 men. <laughs> so I think if we have more women, then we will have a problem. But uh, saying that, we would love to see more women. Honestly, mm -hmm. yes. uh, we would love to see more, more women consider the chamber as a platform that they can contribute. Um, the chamber is a voluntary job um, and its objective is to give back to the business community to ensure that we sustain businesses and support them, it's regardless of what is happening in the economy in Bahrain or globally. We are basically the voice. Oh. Now, men or women, one of the beautiful things about being a woman in Bahrain is that Bahraini women have always been empowered. And we're always in the, in the stage of progression. Uh, and I think Batur will agree with me that the last four years being women in the chamber, even though we were only three out of 18, we never felt that we were left out or we were short-sighted or we were not given opportunities. In fact, we were always given opportunities. We were always asked to be involved in everything that we do. We were always listened to. And we always had the audience of all the members uh, in, in the board. And, and this gave us always the confidence and gave us the power to do more and give more. But it would be interesting to see more women that would uh, volunteer and would nominate themselves hopefully in the next term coming. This is an interesting opportunity to give back to the community, yes. especially if you have an experience. I always say, I've done mistakes in my businesses. I'm not just a success story because everything has been rosy and everything has been beautiful. Part of my journey was the mistakes that I did. And every time I fell flat on my face, I got up, I learned from my mistakes and I went on. But if I'm in an opportunity and in a position that I can share my mistakes and, and support business people to avoid my mistakes so that they can create successes in a shorter time span that I have done, then the BCCI is the platform to be. Because we can put our hands together and ensure that we have the right platforms, we have the right infrastructure, we have the light, right legal uh -huh. systems that support the business community. One of the biggest challenges that we have today is the bankruptcy law. Uh -huh. It's an efficient, beautiful law written in the best possible way. But when it comes to execution, we have a problem today. And if we want to be out of this pandemic, people to have the opportunity to start all over again, then this law has to be applied in the right possible way. Mm. And it is our obligation as the chamber to work with the Minister of Justice and the, the team there for the effective application of the bankruptcy and restructuring law to give the business community the chance and the opportunity to restart. Yes. And, and this is, it's already there. The law has been issued and it's, Amazing. It's perfect in every possible sense. But sometimes the application of it is not. And it is our responsibility the case to when do. it comes to law, isn't it? Yes. The beauty of the existence yes. and the, impl the implementation on yes. the ground. Yeah. And, and this is very important. Even if we want to for, uh, encourage FDIs to come to Bahrain, one of the first things they're going to evaluate is uh, the strength of our bankruptcy yeah. law. Uh, and this is why it is our responsibility as men and women to, to consider the chamber an opportunity to give back to the business community, to support the business community. At the end of the day, we're creating a future for our ch children, for the next generation of business people. If we want to encourage you know, everybody to be entrepreneurs, to, to take out the creative side, we also have to be there to support them if things go wrong. We also have to be there to put the infrastructure to support them if things don't work out in the way that it should be. Right. The pandemic was a genuine example. Mm. It flipped everything 180 degrees <laughs> on everybody, right. even yeah. the biggest organizations mm. faced problems. And, and it was a lesson to be learned that we have to be ready. We have to be flexible enough to accommodate our business models to adapt to any sudden shock, any sudden change that will hit us. 
And, and we see a lot of businesses came out, a lot of businesses sustained. Uh, now is the time to ensure that they even grow back right. to where they were and even bigger, inshallah. Yes. Uh, but all, um, picking a cue from what she said, yeah. we started off with discussing with women and yeah. the need to Im implement laws on the ground yeah. so that, you know, and the flexibility aspect. Adding to that, my question to you would be, um, we, dis we just mentioned about the SMEs, about 98% of Bahrain's economic nerve. And more and more women coming forward, yeah. uh, especially entrepreneurs. Yes. It's just my observation and a curious question. Do you think women are limiting themselves, business women are limiting themselves to certain sectors, which is perhaps one of the reasons why, uh, definitely, I had Tanima with me the other day. You must be knowing Tanima. Tanima is from the construction and electricals. Yes. And we have softer businesses like fashion or salons and spas and uh, eateries, isn't it? So we do have potential out there. Mm -hmm. But do you think that's tapped enough or what's, uh, what is the uh, limitations you think women out there, the Bahraini women out there, are facing when they want to come forward into the business? Um, to me personally, I think that entrepreneurs are entrepreneurs. Whether they are women or men, mm -hmm. it does not matter. You know, We, I think, in, in Bahrain and even in the chamber, we believe in gender equality. Mm -hmm. uh, we like to empower all entrepreneurs, you know, and in, in chamber, I don't see that the presence of women is less uh, in, in any ways. I think we have a lot of staff, which probably the majority is, is women. Uh, in every committee that we had, we made sure that there is, a, 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 you know, a presence of, of uh, you know, female uh, uh, members in, in, in all the committees. In fact, three of them were chaired by, by women. Mm -hmm. And uh, also, I just feel that I think our job and duty is to give them the tools, mm. you know, and then they should self empower themselves because it's it's better than giving them everything on a silver platter. You know, mm. you want to mm. really empower them. They need to work hard for it. You know, that's when uh, the that's what true, she said, learning from mistakes. Yes, exactly. Yeah. The true potential only comes when you do it yourself, you go through the hardship, you know. Yeah. So I don't think that any field is, uh, you know, like uh, fixed for just uh, women or for men. We have seen today in Bahrain that women have been in literally all the fields. Yeah. Talk about pilots, talk about being in the, uh, you know, in, in, in the space and in, in Navy and like there are all the fields that women are in, there are engineers, there are, you know, artists, or I think name it, you know. So to be very honest, it's a very personal thing. It's all about passion, where your passion takes you. If you are going to put your 100% plus if you have the family support. And in Bahrain, we have a lot of the infrastructure is there to support, I think, women more than men you know <laughs> we have the supreme council for women which is probably the biggest uh, pillar you know yes, behind every indeed. bahraini yeah. woman you know so i don't think that uh, you know I they mean, are limited fixing mm -hmm. yeah and limiting women only to work in a certain field is it does not apply to bahrain uh, at least great great and um there are certain countries which uh, retain a system called the quota system. What is your take on it? Do you think we should apply that as well? Certain number of seats reserved or certain number of uh, reserved seats for women to contest or I'm talking of the board now, you know? Yeah, coming. again, I would say, Rachi, that um, there is no hard and fixed rule to mm -hmm. that, you know? Uh, it is uh, open. The election was open for anybody to come. There were other women also who had nominated themselves. Yes. I think we had six women competing yes. this time, yes. and fifty percent so, of it made. That's a good yeah, achievement. Yeah, that's a isn't good uh, yeah. your ratio, anyways. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, but it's it's all about uh, election. Is also election. In the end of the day, you you can't say we are very blessed and lucky that all eighteen came. But if any one of us would have you know, wouldn't have made it. We understand how it works. We have been in it before and we're going for the second time, but the possibilities are always the same in the end. You yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. So um, I was just, uh, I, I was just smiling because I was thinking about the election scenario as such, you know, and 
uh, we as journalists, we always keep different angles to, to focus on. So I remember the parliament and the BCCI, we keep focusing on women. And at the same time, it's funny that we are talking of gender equality, isn't it? Why do we think of, like I just said, six women competed. And even in the parliament, we used to think like this many women. So how many are winning? How many are not winning? We still, I think it's a mindset out there. I think, I think so. so. Yeah. I think so. Because it's, you know, like it's not only BCCI. Look at the parliament. How many Every, yeah, there? exactly. It's complimenting. It's a team. And very happy to have such an elegant board of uh, cohesion and harmony to see. And obviously, you women come with rich experience and expertise. On that note, let's take one more short break before we come to the last segment of the show. With me this evening on Biz Talk is Batul Dadabai and Sonia Janahi. NEC Rabbit. Send money online to India. Credit in seconds with great rates. Download NEC Rabbit app now. Welcome back to a very special evening with two beautiful guests with me, Sonia Janahi and Batul Dadabai. As we come to the close, I really enjoyed the short, sweet conversation that we had. And we cannot wrap up this show without touching on your personal businesses. That's what makes you success stories of your own, on your own, and that's what brings you here. Can I begin with the chocolate woman, please? Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> because both are close to my heart, fashion and sweet. Sonia, tell me about Maya. Maya. Maya started as a diversification to my investment portfolio. Okay. My background, I started my career in telecom sector and then went into banking. And then in 2002, single mother, two daughters, I took my social insurance money and started my entrepreneurship journey, mainly because I felt I can do more. I wanted to create a difference. I wanted to be different. And I started my venture into real estate. I had a real estate investment company. I went into joint venture with Arab Tech for construction, exclusively for Bahrain, and parallel to that, set up an interior design and architecture company. By 2004 and five, when real estate was booming globally, I was worried, and people were laughing at me when I told them I was worried where the real estate market was going. To me, it felt unrealistic. The, uh, the returns that we were making on real estate was in triple digits, and once you see this hype, you realize something is wrong. You know, it's a bubble that will burst any minute. So I looked at my portfolio and I just, I realized I've done the simplest mistake, which I've always been telling my investors to avoid, putting all my eggs in one basket. And all the companies that I had created were exclusive real estate focused. So if anything happens globally, all my companies will be affected. Then we realized we need a differentiation, we need a diversification. So we looked at the opportunities available and we realized that as a family, every time we travel, me and my siblings, we always come back with a suitcase filled with chocolate. And the reason why we do that is because we lack that high quality chocolate in this part of the world, which has low sugar, low cocoa butter, no additives, no preservatives. Mm -hmm. So we started venturing and studying the concept of making chocolate. We went back to the roots, to the origins of how chocolate was identified by the Mayan tribe in, in Central America mm -hmm. and how they basically used it to barter with the Europeans. And for hundreds of years, it was the drinks of the kings and queens, the secret drink of okay. the kings and queens. And mainly because of the benefits of having pure cocoa. Taking that in mind, we we started Maya. I, I basically did a full program. I studied uh, the art of making chocolate. I'm today a certified chocolatier. Okay. And we started all our brand focusing on low sugar, low cocoa butter, 
no additives, no preservatives, because we have to give back to the community. My company is about chocolate for a better world. We have to make sure anybody who enjoys our brand is also, um, you know, taking into consideration safety and health factors. It, it doesn't have to be chocolate and harmful. It can still be beneficial, especially with the high percentages of cocoa. But also parallel to that, we created it to be the first franchise model going out of Bahrain. Three months after we opened the first outlet, we franchised Maya. Now we are focusing on even taking it to IPO. So at the end of the day, we, we, I took everything I learned from my investment background, from my passion for chocolate and how much I love chocolate, and built it into this concept that today I'm very proud of as a Bahraini model. What a beautiful uh, literature, I Thank would you. say that, you know. The effort and the heart and the soul that you have put into your, put into your passion. Uh, that's amazing. Thank no you. wonder Maya has become. And the oxymoron that is healthy chocolate, yes. isn't it? Thank yes. you so much for gifting Maya to Bahrain and Thank the larger you. world. And all the very best, Sonia. Thank you so beautiful, much. I'm honored. Beautiful. Thank you. And on the same note, it's all about passion, isn't it, Batul? When Always. it comes to affinity. The word itself, affinity. Yeah, that's a strong word. I love certain words for their power. And affinity speaks volumes. If you look into the meaning of the word, yes. the depth of it. Tell me, why did you name your brand, the passion which you describe on your uh, website and home pages, your taglines? Why did you name it affinity? Um, initially, when I was looking for a name, I had a lot of options in mind. But I don't know when I, the minute I heard this name, Affinity, I think uh, then, then all the other names disappeared, you know, from <laughs> my mind. Affinity, it, it means like, you know, it, it gravitates you. Yes. Uh, you, it, it just pulls you. Uh, there's a power. There's that's, some, that's, there's, there's a magnetic a power, charisma. You know? yeah. So for, somehow I just uh, got, uh, you know, it, I clinked to this word, you know, and then I said, okay, Affinity. But then there is another company in Bahrain, which is called Affinity. Yes. So I said, whatever, I'm not going to leave this word. So I made it Affinity by Betul. By Betul. So, you know, <laughs> that is what a lot of my friends said. No, it's a good name. Uh, you know, it, it just, uh, it goes very well with the product itself, you know. Right. And uh, initially when I started, of course, uh, Affinity is a very small, it's a new company. Uh, comparatively, it's just been around six years now. Mm -hmm. Uh, I was in uh, the the Dubai group of companies, um, the signage company, Arabian Neon. So mm -hmm. it's a signage and uh, outdoor advertising company. Let's say the working in the corporate sector gave me all the uh, you know the, the the experience, the ground level. Everything was built there. But then after many years, when we built Galeria Mall, uh, my dad, uh, one day he called me, he said, okay, come and meet me in this place. So then I just went like that. So he said, okay, choose. So I'm, I'm just wondering, I'm like, what do you mean by choose? He says, choose a place. I know you are into fashion. You love fashion. It's about time you leave the, the, the corporate office and you start your own uh, company and, you know, go and follow your dreams. So... I owe it to him, uh, you know, to, to encourage me, to motivate me. And, you know, he said, uh, whatever you want, the whole team is behind you. Go for, you know, what you are meant to do. So since then, I mean, I, I can't tell you that, uh, you know, my, my affinity is my baby. And it is like, you know, something that if you tell me, stay there 24 hours and work, I will not uh, get tired, you know. And uh, alhamdulillah, I've got a lot of good response from Bahrain because we are more customized, we are more couture. Uh, it is about having a handful of uh, customers that, uh, you know, actually uh, are looking for something different. We don't have uh, mass production. We kind of go with everybody. It's, it's, it's like based on themes, it's based, based on events. And uh, by the grace of God, uh, we still have a long way to go, but uh, I see a lot of light, uh, you know, from the tunnel. Very good. And thanks for bringing in uh, the reference to that great iconic businessman of Bahrain, Mohammed Dadabai. I've had the honor and privilege of having him on this uh, show and uh, what a great uh, personality. 
kind of his words are always of course you are his daughter but even otherwise even on a personal note whenever he talks there is a great affection you know is full of affection and i can see that inspiration that he had passed on to you to go chase your dream and i'm glad that both of you women are chasing your passion all the very best from team bmc and personally to your businesses as well as the new team for jar 22 i've had the honor of having basmal sai with me uh, before the elections and i hope to see the others on the team as sure. well uh, in the coming days because bahrain needs a team like you uh, i'm impressed at the harmonious way that you've put forward your sustainable sustainability and growth agenda and as both of you highlighted challenges are many indeed but i'm sure with the experience and expertise and leadership like mr naz we're going to see can i have your wrapping comments please sonia um we're very excited we look forward to the next four years yes. um and uh, and we have a beautiful vision of making sure that the business community in bahrain not only sustain but grow iconically beyond bahrain and it is our role and responsibility to make sure that our members have that privilege of developing their business opportunities and growing um and becoming international brands international names and this is a dream for us but we will make sure that this dream becomes a reality all the very best and thank you so much for having us today thank, thank you. you honor is mine but uh i believe in two things very strongly one is teamwork second is strong communication i think that if uh we put these two things together we can work in a beautiful way you know whether it is uh you know teamwork between not only the 18 board members but teamwork with the rest of the business sector teamwork between the bcci board and the rest of the authorities you know the legislative authorities and uh, that is that is very important everybody needs to work together yes. as a team and communication whenever there is something that comes in the way let's talk let's bring it out let's take out a solution so that you don't get stuck anywhere so i'm sure that uh, as a team inshallah we are going to you know make sure that uh, these two things besides these two factors all other factors are in place we are going to give it our best shot and uh, you know i'm sure that inshallah with your support and support of many other uh, people we will be able to make a difference right Thank you very much for joining us this evening on Biz Talk from BMC Global Live and that was the board members to Bahrain Chamber the women board members two of the three Batul Dadabai and Sonia Janahi on the special episode of Biz Talk until we meet next week with yet another guest this is Rajiv Unikrishnan signing off